Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank Review. This is the series where I help train your brain to recognize high yield, high yield patterns and to approach these exams like somebody who's trying to solve a jigsaw instead of somebody who's just simply trying to take a test. Let's get into our next practice question. So the question reads, a 58-year-old female presents to the emergency department with three days of progressively worsening vomiting, diarrhea, myalgias, and malaise. She tests positive for an RNA orthomyxovirus. She is treated with o and given intravenous fluids and odansetron. Which of the following sets of laboratory values should you expect to see in this patient? Now, as you can see, there are five different choices, A through E, and each of them has a different pH, a different potassium, a different sodium, and a different chloride. For potassium, sodium, and chloride, there are up-down arrows, and the pH is written out as a numerical value. I'm not going to bother reading A through E to you, so pause the video so that you can review the possible answer choices. Assuming that you've looked over A through E, we're going to continue. Please pause the video if you need more time to review the answer choices. And if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. So the answer to this practice question is actually choice C, a pH of 7.48, a decreased potassium, an increased sodium, and a decreased chloride. In order to get this question right, and in order to train your brain to recognize the pattern that this question is going after, you need to be familiar with a concept that is referred to as contraction alkalosis. And in order to best understand contraction alkalosis, I think we should look at the physiology so that you can understand what's happening. So contraction alkalosis begins with a loss in fluids. And whenever the body loses fluids, it's going to activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. When that system or that axis gets activated, there's going to be multiple downstream effects on the nephron. Three of those effects that you should know for test day, especially when we're talking about contraction alkalosis, is that you have two changes in the proximal tubule and one in the collecting duct. In the proximal tubule, you're going to get bicarb reabsorption. In the proximal tubule, you're also, you're also going to get an increased exchange of sodium and hydrogen. And then in the collecting duct, because of these changes, you're going to get an increased secretion of potassium. Now, if I can kind of like pause for a second and just give you a snapshot of the different mechanisms that we're talking about in contraction alkalosis, what I'm telling you is that there's a loss of fluids and downstream of that, the nephron is going to have different changes as a direct result of the activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So in order to get these questions right, you have to understand physiology. It's absolutely important. And in this question in particular, this is a really high yield question. There's always going to be these questions about physiology and losses or changes in intravascular volume. And what you need to recognize is not only should you expect changes at the nephron, but you have to anticipate the actual causative loss of fluids. So in this problem, in this high yield problem in particular, you're vomiting up stomach acid and vomiting up the fluid, and you're losing your intravascular volume because of mechanistic changes in the nephron. So if you understand what's actually happening in the big picture, which I've shown here in the gray boxes, then you can sort of infer what's going to change with your electrolytes. So I'll fill that in for you for your convenience. When you vomit up stomach acid, not only are you losing the intravascular volume and downstream, you're going to set off this cascade of events that causes the contraction alkalosis, but you're going to actually lose chloride. And when you lose your intravascular volume, you reabsorb bicarb, so bicarb goes up, you increase your sodium hydrogen exchange, so sodium will increase and hydrogen will go down. And because of that, you'll have an increase of potassium secretion at the collecting duct, so potassium will go down. Now, taken in, you know, together as whole, this will tell you that if we go back to our practice question, we're going to expect the pH to go up, okay? Because we are losing hydrogen, we're reabsorbing bicarb, so that will cause a net alkalosis. So you could immediately cross out all of the answers that have a decreased pH because it has to go up. So you're already looking at choice B or choice C. Now, choice B and choice C have the same up-down arrows for potassium and sodium. Again, sodium's up because of that increased sodium exchange, 
and potassium is down because of that increased potassium secretion. And just as a whole, you should think that whenever the body loses fluid, it's gonna attempt to contract and maintain the fluid status. And when it does that, sodium goes up and potassium goes down. This is just a classic effect of aldosterone. So the question here is, if you're, be if you're between choice B and C, what's happening with the chloride? And because in this case in particular, the patient has had protracted vomiting, you can anticipate that they're actually vomiting up the chloride ions that are in the gastric acid. So if you're losing that, then chloride is down. And that's why choice C is the correct answer here. But I want to pause for a second and really hit you with the high yield bottom line because contraction alkalosis shows up a lot. And there's a lot of different causes for where the contraction alkalosis can come from. It doesn't matter if you're bleeding out, if you're vomiting up fluids, it doesn't matter what the case is. But generally speaking, a loss in fluids is going to lead to what's known as the contraction alkalosis. The body's volume status is going to attempt to contract and maintain the status before the body started losing fluids. And in doing so, you obviously become alkalotic, as we've already discussed, because you're losing hydrogen and you're reabsorbing bicarb. In a contraction alkalosis, you're gonna get an increase in sodium and a decrease in potassium. And if the actual cause of the fluid loss is vomiting, you're gonna have a decreased chloride. So I know that I flew through this high yield question, but I want to really leave you understanding that contraction alkalosis shows up on exams all the time. It gives examiners an opportunity to ask you about electrolytes, a lot about pH, about physiology, about the nephron. There's a ton of different physiology happening here, so please understand this.